Indiana Jones is being deleted from history. Mr. Reagan. All right, so you may be wondering what this has to do with politics other than the typical SJW woke Hollywood BS. Oh, we can't have a straight white male in a lead role anymore, so we got to kill him off or something like that. That is something to talk about. That's a bad thing. That's something that none of us like. Cultural vandalism, as we call it, the destruction of our culture. But I think that there is an analogy to be drawn between what they're doing with Indiana Jones right now and what they are doing in our school systems with American history and world history. But just what they're doing with the Indiana Jones series is revolting. And if you haven't heard, I do think that you will be shocked by this particular instance of cultural vandalism. Now, you've heard of inflation. You've probably heard of stagflation, but have you heard of shrinkflation? Yeah, shrinkflation. That is actually a thing. Now, this is where your candy bar or your burger or your orange juice get smaller, but the price stays the same. It's sometimes difficult to notice these things because the packaging often remains the same size. But this happens all the time. It's happening everywhere right now. But the government insists that inflation is under control and that it's just temporary. But what do you think? Do you trust that this administration has anything under control? Exactly. But you know what? Noble Gold is ahead of the game here. They know that with a precious metals IRA, you can hedge against these rising prices so that you can retire without worrying about it. You'll keep up with the inflation that the folks in Washington are trying to pretend doesn't exist. And this month, to thank you and to get your precious metals project off to a flying start, Noble Gold is giving away this five ounce solid silver America the Beautiful bullion coin with every qualifying IRA and 401 rollover. This one is the Idaho Wilderness, fantastic company. And in fact, Somebody wrote in the comments the other day, they wrote, uh, your Noble Gold advertisements are great. I invested with them and he's very happy. So that's great. And if you want to invest too, go to noblegoldinvestments.com or call them at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. Now, this is a rumor of the new Indiana Jones movie. Uh, how would that supposed to end? Uh, this was a rumor that was leaked by... A YouTuber known as Dictor Van Doomcock, typically called Doomcock, I believe the channel is called Overlord DVD. Anyway, if you like pop culture stuff and you're interested in Star Wars and Indiana Jones and all that kind of stuff, watch his series. He does stuff on Star Trek, he does stuff on all that kind of pop culture stuff. Great channel. So anyway, the rumor is that they want, essentially they want to replace Indiana Jones with a feminist woman. Now they tried to do this obviously with Luke Skywalker, right? They killed off Han Solo, they killed off Luke Skywalker, and they replaced them with this character Rey, who is not really related to Luke Skywalker in the sequels, but for some reason takes on the name Skywalker. And it, it actually doesn't make any sense in the story, but I think they wanted to just replace Luke Skywalker with a woman. So they're calling her Skywalker so that they can kind of delete Luke Skywalker from the cultural diaspora, if you will. And this is, of course, the vision of the head of Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy. And I've done a video about her before. She was essentially Steven Spielberg's assistant for many years. She got to become very close friends with Steven Spielberg, very close friends with uh, George Lucas. And despite the fact that she was merely Steven Spielberg's assistant, she got the title of producer for many of Spielberg's films. And so she became highly respected in the film industry because she was one of Steven Spielberg's producers. In reality, of course, she was his personal assistant. But nevertheless, she is now the head of Lucasfilm working at Disney. And she has really just destroyed the Star Wars universe, the Star Wars franchise. People thought Star Wars was dead until the Mandalorian came along and saved it. Now, most of us were pretty severely disappointed in the fourth Indiana Jones film, a film that many of us pretend it does not exist. But that said, apparently what they did with that film is nothing compared to the horror of what they're doing with this new movie that's coming out. Now, this new movie was set to be released next year, but they delayed it for a year, and I'll kind of get into that later. But apparently Indiana Jones has a new sidekick or has a new friend coming along with him on this journey, and it is the actress Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Now, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is both an actress and a writer, and and Phoebe Waller-Bridge created a show in the UK called Fleabag. And this show was highly acclaimed. It was absolutely beloved by the fans. I've never seen it. But from what I understand, it's somewhat of a feminist show, right? It's a show that you will like if you are a feminist woman, if you're left wing. I don't know that for 
sure that's what I've heard. I will actually probably watch a few episodes of this, get a sense of what the show's about, but I've never seen it. So it might be fantastic. I don't know. Now, Phoebe Waller-Bridge was recently brought on to the new James Bond film, uh, in which I've been told that James Bond passes on his 007 status to a black woman. So this just seems to be the theme of Hollywood, isn't it? We kill off Luke Skywalker, we pass the baton on to a woman. We get rid of James Bond, and we pass on the 007 baton to a black woman. And Indiana Jones is passing the hat on to a woman. This is Hollywood's new thing. It's like the fashion of the day. This is what we're doing. But in the course of doing this, they are, of course, destroying Western civilization. They're deleting our culture. But in the case of Indiana Jones, it's not even a metaphor. I'm not talking about this in a kind of a ethereal sense of they're distorting our culture so much that it's unrecognizable or something like that. No, no, no. In the case of Indiana Jones, they are literally deleting Indiana Jones from history. According to this uh, Doomcock, you know, the guy who leaked all this stuff, at the end of the Indiana Jones film, the next one, not only does this Phoebe Waller-Bridge end up with the Indiana Jones hat and end up being, essentially being the new Indiana Jones, but apparently they kill off Indiana Jones, and so then she becomes Indiana Jones. But it's far, far worse than even that, because apparently in this film, old Indiana Jones from today goes back in time to fight alongside young Indiana Jones, of course, with this Phoebe Waller-Bridge character with him. And at the end of the film, according to the leak, both old Indiana Jones dies and young Indiana Jones dies. And presumably this is, I think this is probably before all of the movies that we saw. That's my understanding. You know, before Raiders, before Temple of Doom, before Last Crusade, before any of that happens, in this new movie, old Indiana Jones goes back in time and he and young version of Indiana Jones both die off. So essentially, since they die off, none of the stuff that we ever saw in any of the movies happens, right? That's all deleted from history. What happens instead? The Phoebe Waller-Bridge character picks up the hat, picks up the whip, and she becomes Indiana Jones. So everything we've seen never happened. All that stuff happened, but with a woman. This is how they are essentially trying to create historical revisionism within the fictional universe of Indiana Jones, right? They are rewriting the history of Indiana Jones, but because it's fiction, they don't just have to pretend that this stuff never happened. They can actually erase it from history. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, none of the Indiana Jones movies actually happen now because Phoebe Waller-Bridge did all that stuff instead. This is a betrayal of not just fans, this is a betrayal of American culture. That was a big part of my childhood, Indiana Jones was. It was something that all of us that grew up in the 80s and then and I, I presume the 90s, we all loved, we all enjoyed. It was a big part of our childhood. All of these movies were all this cultural stuff was. Why are we deleting this stuff? Well, I can only think that it's because of hatred. These women, these feminists, they hate men. They hate the male culture. They think that the male culture is toxic, right? And they've got to erase it. They've got to delete it. They've got to destroy it. They've got to distort it so badly that it's unrecognizable. Uh, not only that, but they actually want to go back in time and literally delete it from history. That's what they want to do. This is a feminist fantasy being played out on the screen in front of us. It's absolutely disgusting. It's despicable. It makes you wonder if a feminist could actually go back in time and kill off the great leaders from history, kill off Abraham Lincoln, kill off Churchill, kill off Eisenhower, and instead replace those great leaders with women, I think they might do it. I think there are some feminists out there that think, well, if we could just get rid of the great men of history and replace them with women, history would be a lot better. There would never have been slavery if women were in charge. I've done a video, actually, previously, in which I went down and I listed off some of the most horrific women from history. And let me tell you, it was somewhat of a fun video to make, but it was a bit of a horrifying video to make. There are some effed up women out there, let me tell you. And this idea that women in power are somehow nicer or gentler or better than men in power, no. I'm sorry, that's just not true. You know, given power, many men are very compassionate, very good people. And that's not always true of women. In fact, I would say that every film set I've ever been on, except for one, if there was a woman director, it was a very difficult film set. And what I tended to find as a pattern with that was that a lot of these women seemed to be people who, as I perceived it, had some kind of insecurity issue, right? They seemed to feel like people weren't going to respect them unless they were totally bitchy to everyone. And they interpreted that as the female version of being an a-hole. And there is this idea in our culture that if a man acts like an a-hole, well, that just respected. People think of him as strong. But if a woman acts like a bitch, well, that's not respect and they just call her a bitch. No, 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 no. 
If a man acts like an a-hole, we all call him an a-hole, okay? If he acts with strength and dignity, but he's also fair and reasonable, then people think that he's strong, right? So you act horrible to people, people are going to think you're horrible. You know, they may not say it to your face, but they're certainly going to say it when they go home at night. There tends to be this inferiority complex with some women in power, and as long as they have that inferiority complex, as long as they act really cruel to everyone around them, people will be nice to you to your face, but they're not going to be nice to you. They're not going to think positively of you. They're not going to respect you. They're going to go home. They're going to complain to their spouse. They're going to say, oh, God, I'm working for this horrible person, right? You're never really going to get respect. You're only just going to get the illusion of respect. People are going to be respectful to you in person and then just hate you. You're just going to live your life hated by everybody. Is that really what you want? I don't think so. So whether you're a man or a woman, you should be nice to the people that you have power over. Now, what is the point of this video? Why did I want to make a video about Indiana Jones? Well, I think that the same impulse to delete the history of the straight white male Indiana Jones going on all of his amazing adventures, the impulse to erase that from history is the same impulse, I think, that drives people to want to teach critical race theory in schools. Because if you look at something like the 1619 Project, right, which is an article that was published in the New York Times, and then it became a school program that was promoted by the New York Times. This idea that America didn't start in 1776, but actually started in 1619 when the first slaves were brought over to America. That is the real birth of America because America has original sin and America is just a, an evil region that is tainted by the sin of slavery. But the truth is, really, every region of the world is tainted with the sin of slavery. You had basically every culture at some point had slavery. So, you know, this idea that this is how we have to define our country is absolutely absurd. And most Americans, most white Americans were not slave owners, did not have ancestors who were slave owners. I never had ancestors who were slave owners. I mean, none of my ancestors were. Uh, so this idea that my white skin somehow taints me is absurd. Okay, it's an absurdity, right? It's just like saying all black people are tainted by whatever murders are happening in Chicago right now. No, that means all black people are murderers. No, it doesn't, right? Not all white people were slave owners. Not all black people are murderers. People are not guilty of the sins of other people that look vaguely like them. The whole idea is just idiotic and stupid, but that's kind of the whole point of critical race theory, right? Is to say that you're all tainted. All white people are tainted by this oppressive mindset. There's a systemic racism in society. Never mind that if you're black, you might be able to get a job easier than if you're white. You have a left-leaning boss and they want more diversity in their staffing. You never hear people saying, we need more white people at a company. You never hear people say, we need less diversity in this company. You never hear that. You hear, we need more diversity. We need more. And that usually means we need more black people or Muslims or something like that. It's never, we need more diversity, so we need more white people. I've never heard that. That doesn't happen, right? So in this world, you know, we don't really have a problem with racism against black people, racism for white people like that help white people out. We don't really have that issue. And yet we want to teach that in our schools that this is the biggest problem that America faces and that we are all sinful. We're all horrible people. And then there is this false history that's being taught. Now, I've done an entire video about this, so I'm not going to rehash it, but there are several different kinds of false histories that we're dealing with. A lot of this is emerging from a racist organization known as the Nation of Islam. Now, this doesn't really have anything to do with Islam in the sense like what people in Saudi Arabia believe or Iran. It's not that kind of Islam. It's really an invented religion by a guy who I'm pretty sure was a white guy. It's a kind of a religion based around the resentment that black people have of white people for historical injustices, right? So you have these historical injustices like civil rights issues and slavery. And so this guy said, well, let's create this religion in which black people are superior to all other races and white people are this demonic plague on the planet. And that's a religion, right? That became the nation of Islam. And through that and through a lot of other kind of just weird pseudo histories like the 1619 Project, which a lot of people like to assert that America's wealth was purely developed out of slavery. Let me just tell you this real quick. Slavery was actually not a very financially viable system for a long time. Only after the invention of the cotton gin was slavery then profitable. So that one invention, at least slavery for cotton picking. Before that, you certainly had slavery as an option, but to house and feed your slaves and to keep them in decent shape was actually a relatively expensive enterprise. And if you weren't making enough money to pay for the slaves, then it was pointless to have slaves. That was actually like too expensive to do. 
So until the invention of this cotton gin, where you could actually make a lot of money just with one slave, slavery wasn't that financially viable. So it wasn't like a huge, huge problem until the invention of the cotton gin. That actually made it a major issue in America, which we, of course, fought a civil war against. But of course, most industry in America did not utilize slaves. And would Europe have become a wealthy region of the world, have become a dominant region of the world without slavery? Yes, of course they would have. Would America have become the most powerful country on earth with Without slaves. Yes, of course they would have. Certainly slavery made a few people wealthy and contributed to the wealth of America, but it certainly didn't create the wealth of America. That is, of course, an absurd myth. America would be probably exactly the same as it is today without slavery, except there would, of course, be fewer black people in America. And the truth is, if you go back in time, was every white person bad? Was every white person an evil person? No, of course not. Was every black slave just a, an angel and a perfect person? No, of course not. You you certainly had slaves who were bad people. You had slave owners who were bad people. But you had good people as well. You had a lot of good black people. You had a lot of good white people. And this idea that we have to just point out everybody from history and say you were all evil, to me that is in itself a grotesque distortion of history. It's sort of like saying that Christians believed that the world was flat. Uh, Christians never believed that the world was flat. Historically, Europeans believed in geocentric universe, right? They believed that the moon and the sun revolved around the earth as opposed to the other way around. Well, the moon revolves around the earth, of course, but they didn't understand the concept of the heliocentric universe until Copernicus and then Galileo. But that, that's something you could kind of imagine makes sense. But the idea of the flat earth, people are called flat earthers or have been called flat earthers for centuries, but it's always been an insult, right? There, there's never been a time in written history that we know about that any like large group of people, any cultures ever really believed that the earth was flat. That's something that people have always used as a kind of insult as far back as we have written record in history. So there's always these things that we don't understand about history. In fact, I almost made a channel just trying to debunk preconceptions about history that are wrong. I mean, a lot of us have been fed a lot of misinformation over the years, but true history, real history to me is is absolutely critical for the development of culture because you do need to know where you come from to understand where you should be going. It's this idea of like, well, let's just teach that socialism totally works. Well, we have lots of instances to show that it doesn't work. And so if we keep teaching kids that socialism is a great system and it works well, then kids are going to say, well, we should get that system, right? We should use that system in the future. And then they're going to fail. So it's much better to teach the truth. It's much better to teach socialism is a failed system. It's failed many, many times. It will destroy your country so that people will want to avoid it, right? That's how I was raised. And that's how I want my kids raised when I have kids. That's how I want my nieces, how I want my nephews raised. I want them to be taught that socialism is a terrible system and that we have to avoid it at all costs. But that's not what critical race theory does. That's not what feminist theory does. That's not what women's studies does. All of these BS classes, queer studies, all this stuff they're teaching students in college, it's just messing up the brains of these kids. And I think I do see a parallel here between what they're doing in education and what they're doing with the culture, what they're doing with our movies. And I think it's something that we have to focus on a lot more than we have been. I, I think that conservatives, Republicans tend not to care that much about fiction. They think, well, it's fiction. It, it's not real. People with like leftist brains, they don't think like that. They think of fiction as sort of an extension of our world, a sort of metaphor for our world. So when they see something work in a movie, they're like, oh, that makes sense. That's reality. A lot of leftists, believe it or not, have been inspired, like these Antifa types, have been inspired to make major changes in the world because of the movie, The Matrix. The Matrix had a massive impact on my generation and the generation below me, the millennials. And there are a lot of millennials that have come out as major activists that I've discovered were actually inspired to do so because of the movie, The Matrix, and the subsequent Wachowski film, which I can't remember, which is the Guy Fox. They were really inspired to create revolutionary change from those films. V for Vendetta was the other movie. Yeah, the real hardcore fans loved V for Vendetta. To me, that was a pretty disturbing movie. But anyway, we cannot allow these people to control the culture because you know what's going to happen when they control the culture? They're going to destroy the culture. All right, well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much that is not so. Good night. President, in talking about the continuing recession tonight, you have blamed mistakes of the past. You blamed the Congress. Does any of the blame belong to you? Yes, because for many years I was a Democrat. <laughs> We have so many people who can't see a fat man standing beside a thin one without coming to the conclusion the fat man got that way by taking advantage of the thin one.